Number 67. A nervous physicist worries that the two metal shelves of his wood frame bookcase might obtain a high voltage if charged by static electricity, perhaps produced by friction. Letter A. What is the capacitance of the empty shelves if they have an area of 1 times 10 to the 2 square meters and are 0.2 meters apart? So basically, this would act like if you had some metal shelves, you know, pretend you got a little bookcase, right? Okay, great. There's your bookcase. Do you want me to build it for you based on this picture? I think not. But pretend that each of the, you know, pretend that we're looking at these two shelves in particular. You know, the top one doesn't really matter. And the bottom one, you know, this is kind of, this could act like a capacitor where you have two parallel plates. They're metal. All right. They're the uh, material between them is air. All right. So you got to remember that the dielectric constant for air is about one. And they tell us that the, the total area of these shelves um, not really each sum together, but each shelf individually, which is the area we're going to use. And then it tells us also the distance that they are apart. All right. They told us that it is 0.2 meters. So I know then that I'm going to be using my capacitance formula here that we've used in the past that the, uh, blah, 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 blah. the capacitance is equal to the dielectric constant multiplied by the permittivity of free space multiplied by the area of each plate. They should be the same. Okay, so you, you don't multiply by two or anything like that. You just take the area of one of them and divide it by the distance. So the dielectric constant for air is about one. The permittivity of free space is going to be about 8.85, 8.85 times 10 to the minus two, excuse me, 12. <laughs> Multiplied then by the area they told us is one times 10 to the two square meters. We got the right units and the distance is also in meters point two. We're just going to plug it in and solve. So 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, multiply them by one times 10 to the two, divided them by 0.2. And here we have a capacitance, tremendously large, a 4.43 times 10 to the minus nine. I was being sarcastic, by the way. I don't know if I couldn't tell, so I don't know if you could. Um, that's A, done. And letter B. So it says, what is the voltage between them if opposite charges of magnitude two nanocoulombs are placed on them? So again, this is the same thing. You know, if, if you have an equal magnitude, you know, you got negative two and positive two on each, you're not going to add them together and all of a sudden get like four nanocoulombs, okay? You're just taking the charge on one, but the charge on one should be the same as the charge on the other, okay? But opposite in sign. In any case, because they're relative to one another. In any case, all we now need to do is basically find a formula Okay, that relates to things that we know. So they tell us the charge that's placed on them, Q. It's going to be two nanocoulombs, but you know we need that in coulombs. So simply multiply that by 10 to the minus 9. That'll be in terms of now coulombs. We need to find the voltage. That's the question. And what did we just calculate? We calculated the capacitance. That's going to be equal to 4.43 times 10 to the minus 9. We need to now think of a formula right, that relates these variables together. And we've seen this countless times now in this chapter, where it's going to be the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor, which the bookshelves are acting like, is going to be equal to the charge stored um, uh, among that capacitor divided then by the voltage applied. Okay, so to find the voltage, just simply do a little whoop and a little whoop. And there you go. That's the formula. Simple. So the charge is going to be 2 times 10 to the minus 9th, all then divided by the capacitance, 4.43 times 10 to the minus 9th. I'm going to use the exact value when I actually do the calculation. So let's see what we get. I mean, they're all going to cancel because they're times 10 to the minus 9th. So it's really going to be 2 divided by, well, actually, I got to do it out there. I'm just, just going to use the exact value in the calculator. So one second. So 2 times 10 to the minus 9th divided then by that exact value from before. So here we go. We get a value of about 0 0.452 volts. Okay. If you think about it, you're talking, you know, just think about that voltage, right? I mean, you, you could think about a normal 9-volt battery that you might plug into some, you know, puny electrical device. You know, this is going to be like, you know, a small little fraction of it, 1 18th of that, basically. So it's really very, very small here. He's way too nervous, this physicist. So... To show that this voltage poses a small hazard, calculate now the energy stored. As if we didn't know that already. So let's do it. Energy is going to be equal to now. 
you gotta know, uh, you gotta ch choose a formula we can use here. Um, now it turns out that we could probably use a whole bunch of them on the bottom. All right, because we know the voltage, right? We know the charge that's stored. We know the capacitance. So, you know, we basically do, can do any one of them. It doesn't matter which one you choose. And we're gonna arrive at the same value. So, uh, I don't know, what should I do? Hmm. I'm gonna choose one with the voltage. The reason being is because they want us they want us to show that it poses a small hazard, so I'm just gonna use that. It does not matter now which one you do. I'm just gonna do the C V squared all over two. Okay. So capacitance was gonna be four point four three times ten to the minus ninth. The voltage here was point uh four five two squared, all then divided by two. So what is that? Maybe this wasn't the best one to choose. I gotta incorporate the squared value. We might forget to do that in the calculator. Okay, hold on one second. Times then, let me not talk and forget it. All right, so when we do the math on out, the energy here is gonna be 4.52 times 10 to the minus 10th joules. I mean, that's, it's basically nothing. Okay, less than a nanojoule. Um, if you had used this formula, right, the one over here, you would have needed the charge, right? And we knew the charge, two times 10 to the minus nine, so you would have plugged that in. So let's do that, two times 10 to the minus nine, multiplied then by that voltage of point um, four, five, two, all then divided by two, and OMG, same value. Hmm. Cool, so that might have been a little easier. The reason being is because you didn't have to square it. There might be a uh, chance that, um, you know, you might have, I might have, you know, not you in general, uh, excuse me, you in general, not you specifically, um, may have forgotten it. It's happened to me many, many times. So sometimes choosing the simple formula is a better option than choosing something that even just having a square, it's not more complicated, it's just one extra step. Then one extra step, we might forget, and that might be the difference between I mean, that could be the difference between passing and failing. Could be the difference between, you know, if you have a very high need for achievement, that could be the difference between getting that perfect score and one wrong. Um, you know, so, all right. I'm out. Thank you, guys. Please help us out. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Hit that like button. And anything else you can think of. <laughs> Take care.